development aspect. And uh, I'll take any questions if you have any. I'm curious about uh, how you approach it. You, you, your concept looks like you adopt a village kind of concept. And in some sense, you approach the village uh, governance and say, you know, what we want to work with you, and you kind of adopting uh, the village. You're not, you're not having an NGO over there working with, but you're actually going to the village right. and. Uh, right. right. That is in, uh, and it happens to be in the backyard of New Delhi, for example, exactly. 80, 80 kilometers, 100 kilometers away. But the thing is that uh, the community is very backwards. So, why this area exists in the first place? Because their own uh, reservations, they have plenty of reservations of their own, so they really don't want to come to the mainstream. So, so that then we say, where, where are there? Then we find those few successful areas and start working them, success uh, breeds a success, and that's the model that we use. And then once the other villages see, then the demand gets uh, quite a bit. Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to think of where it comes from. Let's say Hyderabad. Right. The, the, your model is more dependent on, uh, there haven't been more temptations. Right. The thing is, the temptation in other parts of the world is, uh, take your land, make it arid, just sell it off, uh, make some <laughs> quick money. I mean, you yeah. know, say I've been through that, I've seen people being uh, tempted with that. Once sure. they don't have the land, you don't have anything to work with anyway. You know? Right. So, and if, and depending on how the trends of uh, real estate is, kind of have those problems. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to see when you look at uh, expanding it to the other parts of the world, the challenges are a little different. I mean, everyone oh, yeah. Be. Yeah, the challenges will be different in uh, different aspects of it. I mean, uh, I mean, our current focus continues to remain in, within India. And mm -hmm. we look at uh, uh, various organizations to work with because we, we also have to be uh, very careful with our own outreach, how far we can go. We want to take this uh, good governance program throughout the country. And uh, we will look at organizations so we can, we can work together and, uh, and take, take uh, help with us, take our model and uh, implement it. You know, we provide the trainings and things like that. Yes. I really appreciate their right-based approach. Uh, really, it's, it's really uh, uh, a thing which has to be thought by every, every individual or every person of a concerned citizen. Um, basically, you know, the, the thing what you're trying to do is really good taking the government to the people, doorsteps of the people, because people don't know. But you have to, the, the other suggestion is, the other way around is also very important. Not only going one way, not from government to people, from people to government also makes a lot of sense. Right. So that there, I think the empowerment is like the political empowerment, the, the democracy em empowerment, the voting rights empowerment. There are so many ways you can do the other way around which will, you know, help them to stand on their own feet instead of you always feeding, feeding, and they just take it and sit it at home. Now, if they know something, they should be able to, you know, spread it to some other. If you can do it in one village, you should not be able, you should not start doing another village, but they should take it and do it in another village. If that approach will work, definitely, you know, the whole country will definitely uh, have a change without we getting involved, but basically empowering them. That's the key thing. Empowering everyone, you know, they, the part of democracy, being part of democracy is what it is, and I think you're going in the right direction. And I really appreciate, and um, I wish, wish we can extend this to other states. And uh, I'm from Andhra Pradesh uh, state, and we are working in the same kind of things. Um, but we, we can work together. Yeah, but the thing is, we, there are so many organizations, and we are working the same lines, but we don't have a good communication. <laughs> That's, you know, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what we are providing. So, uh, so the thing is, you know, it's not only here, but in, in India. If you, if you look at the number of organizations in, in, in India, the number of non-profits or other organizations, there are around 2 million organizations. You don't believe that. That many organizations are there. So if you think, if there are around 2 million responsible citizens in India, what kind of change you can bring? Can you bring good governance? It's, not, it's a matter of years. You don't need to wait till 2020. I don't think even that. Right. I, my background is I, I'm an uh, information technology professional. I worked uh, uh, for EDS for many, many years. And uh, I left EDS to, in 92 to work for uh, uh, our own organization, setting up their networks in India. And pretty much uh, we sold all our businesses in 2000, no, no, 1998. 
and uh, from whatever the profits came for sale of that uh, businesses was put, put, put aside in a trust and most of our activities run from that trust. You know. And as I said, uh, our ISVD model, which is a beautiful model that can be replicated, but it's very uh, cost, of, cost, uh, costly model to implement you know, to, to go into the service delivery aspect. So that's where we look for resources, how we can mobilize resources to take this program forward. Yes. I have a question, Anganwadi program. Yeah. That's a government funded program. Right. How do you work with them? How do you make them more efficient? Well, our first, pardon? Yeah. Basically what we do is more on the uh, training. Uh, but first of all, the uh, one of the areas, Anganwadi doesn't even, I mean, there's a pointed on the body for the village, but they, they, the person doesn't show up. That's, that's the biggest thing. And so first and foremost, we make sure those people are appointed and make sure those people are showing up to service. Because community, uh, they're, they're pretty much content with it. Well, she doesn't come. That's what uh, I mean. So we, we try to say, no, that is our responsibility and she needs to show. And these are the things. That, so there's a community perfect pressure. And then we work with her as well on the training aspect of it. How, what, roles that she needs to perform. But then she also has the issues because the uh, uh, facilities that she needs, she doesn't have the basic facilities in the village. So it's not a, you know, so we work from all angles to make sure that the delivery of from the health services, whatever the, uh, the ration and all those things should be present, make sure there's a place uh, allotted for the army party where the, the children are supposed to come and uh, take care of. So all those things we work on yeah. Now you mentioned yeah. right to information. Yes. In this morning's Wall Street Journal is a full page article about mm -hmm. right to education. Right to education. So those of you interested, as you, it's a very mm -hmm. interesting article. Yeah. Okay. I haven't finished reading it, but I'm not mm -hmm. reading it. Yeah. About India. Right. Right, right. to education. And this in the Wall Street Journal today? Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure I'll read it. Mm -hmm. Thank you.